Hello, I'm going to show you how to use Excel to determine derivatives. So let's begin by considering a function of the type y equals x to the n, where n is an integer. All right? And we want to use Excel to evaluate the derivative of y with respect to x. I want to see if the result is in agreement with the so-called power rule, which you can derive in any physics, I mean physics, any calculus book. Uh, dy dx of x to the n should be n to the x minus 1. Okay. And the derivative, of course, let's say this relationship might involve a, uh, y might be distance and x might be time. So the derivative of y with respect to x would be the uh, velocity. All right. So let's put this aside and let's start. All right. So I have my x value. Now I got the, this array of x values from 0 to 25. I want to show you how I did it. I did it by establishing a pattern. Now I'll just demonstrate this in case. Start with 0 and point. Let's say I want my increment to be 0 0.001. Okay. So now I have a pattern. It's changing by 0 0.01. 0 0.001. And uh, you can copy it down. All right. So that's how I got this array of x values in 0 0.001 increments from 0 to 25. So now I want to put my function in. So f of x. Now let me call it y of x. Okay. And the function is y equals value of x raised to the n power. And I, I, I'm putting the n value in cell E1. And I want, as I copy this down, I always want it to refer to this particular cell. So if I hit F4, it will change that cell location to E1, from E1 to dollar sign E, dollar sign 1. So if I copy this formula down, let me just show you if I copy it down. You can see it still refers to the same cell, E1. All right. Okay, now I'm going to. Oops. Delete that. Now, if you want to copy this formula down, you can copy it all the way down, or you can just go. See this little box here? If you just double click on it, it copies it all the way down. Now, the, re the, fu the function is y equals x to the 1, right? Okay, and that means y equals x. You can see these values are all the same, all right? If I put x to the 2, they're no longer the same, all right? Well, let me go back to 1, all right? x squared, all right? So, again, let me, you can see it, it went from 0.001 to 0.00001, all right? Okay. So let me go back to my initial value. All right, now um, I'd like to uh, also, uh, let's make a graph of this function, all right? So I, because I have nothing above here, I can simply highlight the two columns that I want to make a graph of. And insert. Okay, and there's my graph, all right? It goes from 0 to 25, and it's a straight line y equals x, all right? And if I want to make it y equals x squared, again, everything's dynamically coupled. So when I change this to 2, I change the entire column from x to x squared, all right? And you can see that it's parabolic, all right? Or I can make it y equals x cubed, okay? And if I make it x to 0, Anything to zero is one. It's just a straight line. All right. So let me go back to square. Right. All right. Now, how do I create an array of derivatives? All right. D y d x. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. The derivative is the slope of this line at every value. How does the slope, the derivative is really the slope as a function of x, all right? And so I'm going to take the 
the, the adjacent values, the x differs by 0.001. All right, I could have made it smaller, be better, but uh, I'm going to take the rise over the run equals the difference in the adjacent y values. So y minus the previous one divided by the difference in the x value. But since it's always 0.001, I'm just going to divide by 0.001. All right. So that's my first derivative. All right. And now let's uh, copy it down. And now let's make a graph, okay, of the derivative versus x, all right? I'll insert, and there's my derivative. Now, you notice that the derivative is always 0. It's not necessarily always 0, all right? Let me change the, let's, let's, let's make the minimum. 0 and the maximum 5. It's not actually. OK. Let's make it. Seven. Make it 50. OK. The derivative is a straight line, all right? And you can see that when x is 5, the derivative is 10. When x is 10, the derivative is 20. When x is 15, the derivative is 30. All right? So it looks as though the derivative, the, the equation for the derivative is 2x. All right? So when you have x to the squared, y equals x squared, the derivative of that is 2x. All right? And that seems to work out. Let's make sure it works out for an n of 1, all right, y equals x, okay, so when you have y equals x, what's the derivative of y equals x, all right, you know, this is a straight line with a slope of 1, but you can't see that it's a straight line with a slope of 1, so let me make my maximum just 5, you can see the slope is 1 everywhere, all right, it has a constant slope, all right, so the derivative of x to the 1 is x is, is 1 rather right the equation for the derivative is 1x or just x and the, sl the slope of y equals x is 1 all right everywhere okay let's go back let's go to 0 all right okay now uh, my function is y equals 1, really, x to the 0. Anything to the 0 is 1. y equals 1. Well, it's just a horizontal line. y is always 1, no matter what x is, all right? Let me put some axes in here. This is x. And this is y. And then y is x, right? And this is this is x, and this is the derivative up here. Okay, so so far it's it's in agreement with the the power rule. All right, so if I have y equals x to the zero, I really have y equals one. And the derivative of y equals 1, no matter what x is, is 0, all right? There's no rise. There's a run, but no, no rise, all right? So let's go back to 1. And now we have y equals x to the 1, so the derivative of that should be um, simply One x, one x to the zero, all right? So the derivative should be one, all right? The function has a constant slope of one, all right? It's a straight line, y equals x. The slope of that is one everywhere. All right, now let's go to two. So we're saying y equals x squared. The derivative of y equals x, okay? So it looks like a quadratic equation. So 
the, the, the derivative of y equals x squared should be 2x. And that's what this is, 2x, all right? This equation is 2x. Let me, let me change a little bit. Let's make it go from 0 to 100. Okay, so when x is 25, 2x would be 50. So the derivative equals 2x, all right? That's the power rule, what it's back. So for y equals 2x squared, it should be 2x to the 2 minus 1, 2x to the 1, 2x, all right? Let's try 3. And now we have the derivative of x cubed. And so that would be 3x squared, all right? And that's what this function is, 3x squared, all right? So for example, when x is 5, 5 squared is 25, 3 times 25 is 75, and it comes out right, all right? And we can do it for other values, we can go to 4. So x to the 4th power, the derivative of that should be 4x to the 3rd power, all right? Okay, and if you check this out, you'll see that it holds, okay? Now you can take any function at all, Let's say you have a function and you want to look at its derivative. And you can get the derivative in the way that I did. Just remember, here's what I did. I put the function in. In this case, I use x to the n, but I was just trying to verify the power rule. Okay. But you can put any function in here and copy it down. Make sure your values of x differ by small amounts because, you know, it's really... Uh, the derivative is the limit of the change in y over the change in x when when those changes in x get to be very, very small, all right? All right, and here's what you do. You just take the difference between adjacent values of y divided by the difference between adjacent values of x. And if you have the same, if the values of x always differ by 0.001, you can just put that in. Alternatively, you can um, just take the difference between adjacent values, okay? And then you just copy it down. So I hope that's helpful. This is how you can use Excel to get derivatives. And so we've shown that the power rule uh, applies, works for the function x to the n, all right? And the derivative of x to the n is n, x to the n minus 1. Okay, but uh, anyway, you can do this for any function. So I hope that's uh, helpful to you. And uh, uh, maybe uh, in a later video, I'm going to show you how to do integration on Excel. Okay, thank you for your attention, and I'll see you next time.